to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. You know, uh, we have a creed uh, with Deep Adventure Ministries that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. There's something in ab about the wild. God is wild. He can't be. There's a saying, I think Aslan uh, said it in Lion, Witch, and the Ro Wo uh, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardroom. I'm a nice lion, but that didn't say that I was a tame lion. So God is a good God, but that doesn't mean he can be tamed. He can't be contained. Uh, uh, his will is, 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 is as thrilling as uh, quasars, as, uh, as expansive as the universe, uh, as dangerous as an 80-foot surf like my son Jeremiah surfed about eight years ago. Uh, and out in the wilderness, you find out pretty quickly that you are not at Disneyland anymore. You know, that there's things out there that can eat you. Uh, there's natural events that can happen. The universe has hard edges. Can, I remember once I was running down uh, a mountain in New Mexico in the Oregon Peaks down by Las Cruces, and three of us guys were just running down this, this kind of stream bed. It was just kind of like a free fall running down. And I got to this one point, and I could see that the next 20 steps in front of us was going to be a drop of probably several hundred feet straight down a waterfall. And I grabbed a tree and kind of whipped around it, grabbed the next guy's arm, and then we yelled and stopped the next guy. So living on the edge, literally, uh, is where you want to be as a Christian. Uh, you don't want to be li living a mediocre life. You want to live the life of adventure. There's no more thrilling adventure than the life of faith. So we have uh, a returning guest today, John Bradford, and his uh, partner in crime, uh, Stephen Ford. And they're both with uh, Wilderness Outreach. So aloha, gentlemen. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thanks for having us here, Bear. You know, it's kind of strange, John. You've been on this show before. I can't imagine you'd want to come back. Yeah, well, you know, that's another thing about manhood, the gluttonous for punishment. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, what is that, that's a good point right there. When we were riding yeah. motorcycles through Virginia, yeah. uh, we, were, we were riding motorcycles, uh, you know, my TV show Long Ride Home, and we're going through the like freezing rain uh, in the month of May, crossing the Cape May with the Cape May Ferry going up to New Jersey from Virginia. And we're like, why do we love this so much? Yeah. What, what, is it in a, what is it in a man that makes him rise to the occasion when there's adversity? Yeah, I really want to get outside the comfort zone, right? I mean, so that's where we're alive, right? And you get out there when it's like, how am I going to endure this, right? But it, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, that's what we're made for. Why is that? Is it? Well, yeah, yeah, I, yeah it's, it's the way that God, you know, I think if we go back to Genesis 2 and it's like, so God makes man, right? And he, he reaches down and, and into the dirt itself and, and water yeah. into those primordial elements, right? I mean, it's like that's what we as male creature are made of, the primordial elements. And then we're basically mentored by God when he's creating the, the rest of the universe, right? Before the woman's even around, right? It's just like, it's, it's father and son together in the wildness of, of the creation, right? It's like, it's just, it's programmed right into our very beings. Yeah, I had someone tell me once that uh, a woman is taken from the man. So it's, the woman is distilled from the man. So she's more like the sweet nectar, the beautiful kind of the, the like, the, that's why our, our lady is the most perfect creature. She's a uh -huh. woman. And then you got these just kind of like this raw, earthy things, you know, men, when, you know, that, that just uh, come right out of the ground. So yeah. we have Stephen Ford with us, too. Both of you guys were in the construction in, back in the day or still are or something, right? Contractors? Well, I still am. John's retired now. So, so I... Uh, Work in the uh, utility industry and uh, oversee uh, contractors uh, building, you know, big transmission lines and substations uh, throughout uh, the state of Ohio. Now you now you've known John for a while, but did you ever know uh, his great skill he has in building churches? I uh, did not. Not till uh, he shared this uh, little snippet a few moments ago. I yes. did not. He probably didn't. Did you? Hey, John. Yes. When you built the church upside down, <laughs> did you go to confession afterwards? 
Well, you know, that was before I would be, came home, right? That was before I came home to the Holy Roman Catholic Church. But it's actually it, it was a school, right? It was a a, a, a Catholic school that uh, I was working on. And it was like this is, uh, you know, it's it's like so here I'm working on this Catholic school and I get this structural steel wrong in the building. So the heavy steel is supposed to be at the bottom. It's not goes to the top and. It's like some of the contractors that were involved in that said, don't tell anybody, right? But I knew, no, we got to take this to Jesus, right? We got to talk about, so we talked to the priest and the, the contractor I worked for. We made it right, but it was just one of those big mistakes, right? When you're not keeping your eye on the ball all the time, you can make a mistake. But it, praise be to God, I was in a Catholic school, and all of a sudden, a few years later, here I am, a Catholic, right? That's so cool. How did that, how did your, both of you guys are Catholic converts, Yes. Uh, how did you come about to become a Catholic, Stephen? Uh, how I came about to be Catholic was actually through my wife. Um, as we were dating and, and going through that whole process, we decided we uh, did not want to uh, live uh, separate lives uh, in, in different churches. So, uh, you know, she went to my church, I went to her church, and uh, we'd had many uh, discussions, some of them heated, uh, some of them not. Um, but at any rate, uh, uh, what actually brought me uh, home to the Catholic Church actually was uh, the uh, Easter Vigil Mass. And you know, for the first time in my life, I had never experienced, you know, uh, all the symbolism and that is associated with the Catholic Church. Uh, you know, really, what really what pulled me in actually was uh, the the uh, altar server actually walking down the aisle with the uh, incense and, you know, actually, you know, blessing us with uh, with God's presence. And that's really what brought me into the church. Uh, it was at that point, moment that I knew that I was home. The book of Revelations came, came, became visual to you. Yes. The symbolism of Revelations you see right there at Mass. The ancient, ancient lion roaring. You know, the, I remember when I was uh, returning to the church myself, I was reading, uh, I, I, I heard of this thing called the Early Church Fathers from reading a book by Stephen Ray that my dad gave me. Greg Wozniak is a Catholic deacon. And uh, I was reading what Justin Martyr said about the epiclesis at Mass. You know, the, the same words that are used to uh, consecrate the host that he used 1,800 years ago are used at Mass today, basically the same words. And I go, Man, if the ancient church was a Catholic church, I need to be. I need to return to the church, and I came. I came roaring back to the church. And what about you, uh, John? What what was your conversion? You 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 uh, converted back in '94. Yes, I did. And uh, again, uh, it's uh, a great woman that I'd met at that time. And uh, uh, so anyway, I, I I met Laura. Uh, she was Catholic. I wasn't. I was looking for a return to. You know, a more noble and uh, religious life, if you will, and uh, met Laura and started going to mass with her. Met some Catholic men. Uh, just felt really at home there. And and I think though, one one of the things that really resonates with me, it's part of the orthodoxy of our faith, is this whole thing of this this uh, this uh, complementarity between faith and reason, faith and science, right? So because I have a background in science, and I was really like, wow, this is, I really got into John Paul II, and, and uh, so yeah, it was just uh, a lot of things were really lining up there that, uh, that brought me home, and then, and, and so Laura and I were dating anyway, and she said, well, we started talking about getting married, and she made it very clear that she, that she was going to be married in the church in a mass, and that meant probably that I should think about becoming a Catholic, right, so I had, I was like, all right, you know, so I, I basically came into the church in 94, and then we got married, and, uh, and that was the first time I received the Eucharist was on our wedding day, so yeah. Yeah, my wife uh, came into the church, the next day we were married. Okay, so I got a question for you. Everybody that's listening is really should lean in now to this answer because I know everyone's asking this question. How long was your first confession, John, and how long was your Steve? How long did it take you to get to get all of that out? Well, I gotta honestly say my first confession really was not that long. Uh, I was not very comfortable with it and and I really didn't truly open up. In fact, I probably really didn't truly open up and have a, a really, really good confession until probably about maybe 10 or 15 years ago. Really interesting. Yes. I was making light of it, but at least we should find out for John. Was yours about an hour and a half, John? Well, <laughs> not not when it should have been. And, and uh. I really, 
you know, I'm blessing Steve here because he was honest with us about that. But yeah, yeah. I came in church and, and I would say that, you know, I'm a better Catholic today than I was yesterday. And I hope to be a better Catholic tomorrow than I am today. And that it wasn't until maybe I was in the church for, uh, you know, maybe 10 years that I finally said, man, I got some issues here that I need to get, dig it out. So I sat down and wrote a timeline of my life down and, and called on a priest. And it was a couple hours. You really, I, that's aw- That's so great to hear. I, wa- I wanted to dig it out. I wanted to get down to it. And get also, the roots out. Yeah, I really did. It was kind of a funny thing about that is I, I really did my best and talked about it. And I, I went a week or so later, I went to a, a little pub with my wife and, and here this, this guy walks in. It was Catholic that I went to school. He's a good friend of mine. Right. And he comes up to me and he's and he starts to tell me this story about something stupid we did when we were in high school. And I went, oh, oh no. you got to go back. Well, I forgot uh, that. We're talking with John Bradford and Stephen uh, Ford with the Wilderness Outreach uh, Group, and we're going to be talking more with them about, about how they build. Epic man building is their model. We'll be right back. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your host, Bear Wozniak, we want to make sure and thank our sponsor, Solidarity HealthShare. They're uh, two members of my family use their, their, their uh, it's, I guess it's a form of health insurance. It's not technically that, but it's just so cool because you can participate with them in a, in a, and be uh, faithful to a Catholic teaching when it comes to health care. So we appreciate their sponsorship. And, of course, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Tom Gripe over there, the CEO, and all the people there uh, treated us so well. And I can personally vouch for them because they uh, – they actually um, uh, uh, helped me uh, finance a used car right in the middle of my long ride home shoot in September when I'm riding motorcycles all day long and we're shooting 16-hour days. Uh, they emailed me, texted me, and this, this woman there just got just did the best possible service. She didn't even know that uh, Notre Dame Credit Union had started to finance us, so I mean, to, to sponsor us. And so it was really cool. She did this great work without even knowing that I was friends with her boss and things like that. So we, we know Notre Dame Federal Credit Union is a great place to go. And you can find both of our sponsors' links on our website. So we're, we're returning uh, with uh, John Bradford and Steve Ford. Uh, they have recently... Uh, were found out in the wilderness. They had been, they had been, uh, what you had been stranded out on the Sangria, Sa- Sangria de Cristo Mountains or something for years. No, actually, they actually have a, a wilderness outreach. I'm just kidding you. Uh, hey, Steve, what's the? Have you ever been lost out in the wilderness? Uh, actually, I have, and actually not too. Actually, uh, in the uh, Sangria de Cristo range, uh, was with the uh, uh, a part of a Boy Scout group. Uh, was one of the adult leaders there. And uh, we were just walking, all of a sudden the trail just vanished. And uh, we spent uh, probably two hours, you know, retracing our steps. Trying to, we kind of knew where we were at and kind of knew where we needed to go, but uh, it took us about two hours to figure out how to get there. And it's uh, kind of a disheartening uh, feeling, you know, truly being lost. Yeah, I know one of, the, one of the things I've learned is when I'm hiking in the wilderness to always look back so that, you know, not just to look for mountain lions, but... To look back, because when you look back, it looks different than when you're looking forward. Because and, yes. and you kind of go, okay, that's, that's where I came, so if I need to come back, that's what it's going to look like. That's like Catholics, you know, follow the ancient path, look back to the early church fathers, and, and kind of get our, get our bearings that way. But with, with the feeling you had, did you, fe- did you feel, was it, was it late in the day? Did you feel you were at some point going to be in jeopardy? Uh, it was late in the day. Uh, really, never thought we were like in jeopardy. But I, you know, I think any time that uh, you're with uh, a group of uh, young people that you're responsible for, and, and and most of them are your own children. I mean, you know, that was the what you know was creating a lot of the uh, internal anxiety. Right. Well, you know, uh, the Benedictine monastery. Did you ever go to the Benedictine monastery there in the Sangre de Cristos, uh, Holy, oh, yeah. Go- Holy Ghost Canyon? Holy Ghost can you mean the uh, the, Bene- the Benedictines, right? The, pe- the Pecos, Pecos, the uh, Pecos the Benedictine Mount, Pecos Benedictine Monastery, Pecos, New Mexico. Okay, yeah, that's a that's a different one. I haven't seen that one. I've been to the Christ in the Desert one up on the Chama River, but not uh, yeah. Yeah, the Benedictines. That's my idea, my spiritual DNA. I was brought to the Lord through the Catholic Charismatic Renewal back in the seventies, 
and uh, and it was that monastery's outreach that reached us. And then they planted a church. Uh, they planted a monastery here in Oahu called Mary Spouse of the Holy Spirit. And I'm an oblate at that Benedictine monastery. So yeah, D and then and the Sangre de Cristo Mountains are so beautiful. Ah, yes. If you catch it at the right time. So J J John, tell us why the ministry Wilderness Outreach. Yeah. Yeah, well, this, you know, we're, we're in a we're in a time when, uh, you know, we're, we're up against it with this this battle with technology and virtual reality and all this nonsense. Right. And it's like, you know, the theology of a man's body really requires him to get outside in the in the back country, so to speak. Right. Get out, get out away from where everything is manicured and everything's set. And it's really uh, you get get back to a point where you you have to work with your hands and, and really look at life as an adventure so that's that's part of something that is really detracting from manhood in our culture today right so so many guys are living a whole life just just working away in some uh corporation and never never get outside of the comfort zone to fi figure out where how god can speak to us in the wild right so so we really we put this together really to uh, to get guys outside the comfort zone so and and we really what we really believe in is that part of the theology of masculine spirituality is a man needs to have pressure put on him on the <laughs> physical the spiritual and the intellectual we need to be hit on all three of those cylinders and really in, in a wilderness environment then what we do we worship so we celebrate the mass we read the liturgy of the hours we work during the day building hiking trails with uh, with hand tools and uh, cross cut saws and pick and uh and then we, of course, we're in an ascetic environment. And then we really train ourselves to be leaders. We really get into the uh, what it means to be a leader. You know, what is it? What is it? Why is a man as a leader different from what a woman would be as a leader, right? And then when we work together and solve problems together, men start to form authentic brotherhood, right? When we're when, yeah, when you're, you're in, doing so, when you're in adversity together, right? You yeah, face, absolutely. yeah, you form hey. brotherhood, right? Uh, yeah, you have to have that, right? You have to have that hard work, competition, and adversity to form authentic brotherhood, right? It's like a that, forge that it's like oh, yeah. that, that forms right. an ally. Yeah, you can't yeah. do it by going out and having a hobby together. Right, right. Yeah, you can't sit on the couch and read John Eldridge and eat donuts, right? And right. get masculine spirituality. You gotta, you gotta live it. You gotta experience it. You know, I, I don't even use the word masculine anymore, John. I gotta tell you, I threw that away. When it, got, when it got co-opted by the all this transgender stuff, I just, oh, yeah. you know what I do? I just say manly. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm a man. I got an XY chromosome, right? That's what we are. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm hearing on that. So so when you, uh, how did you, you both, did you did you both start this together? Or how long have you both been involved in this, Steve? Uh, I've only been involved in it for a little less than 10 years, and I actually just met John almost to a freak encounter. I went to a, uh, a daily mass with a, a good mutual friend of ours and uh, after this mass uh, this, this man told me he said uh, here you, you got anything planned the rest of the morning I was like no no not really he said uh, well I got somebody I want you to meet and uh, and my life really was uh, forever changed in, in a positive way yeah well, what does that mean in, wait 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 what does that mean your life was forever changed in a positive way first of all that's hard to believe looking at John Bradford that he could have that effect on you but but what does that mean well, because, you know, John has, you know, showed me, you know, challenged me, you know, to become a better man, a better husband, a better father, um, you know, and not just through my actions, but I mean, you know, you know, I was, you know, I was that, you know, guy sitting on the couch eating donuts, you know, thinking I was, you know, because I love my wife and I was uh, loyal to her that I was doing everything I should be doing, but I was not making myself a better husband. I was not making myself a better father. I was not really showing my sons you know how to be truly authentic men yeah you know you have behind you the uh, people who uh watch the youtube version of this this goes out to millions of people on ewtn and a lot of podcasts even serious radio and shortwave radio around the world but you can watch this on youtube the bear wasnick channel and we appreciate it if you go subscribe there by the way way and share this with your friends because it helps us evangelize but there's something in the background if you watch this on youtube they have two uh huge uh, saws that are basically meant to cut big lumber and the only way you can really use that biggest one especially on the on the, on the one side uh, the most effective way is there's a handle on both ends of that saw it's designed for two men to saw that down right 
Yeah. Yes. Yes. What, what, yeah, John. What's the allegory there for for what you've been talking about? Yeah. But so 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 we we need a bright. We need we're in relationship. I mean, it's kind of like, and I've heard you speak about this, Bear. I'm going to steal some stuff from you, but you know, it's that holy trinity, right? I mean, that that in relationship. So two men. And then the, the Holy Spirit's present there. Two men can saw that log together, but you're going to be, a, it's going to be a long time to cut a four foot diameter ponderosa pine by yourself, right? But when you got a guy on the other side, you're going to start, it's, what's really great about that is you're going to struggle at first to try to figure out the rhythm of each. Other, yes, right? yeah. And then go through this process <laughs> of learning, of fighting against each other, but then all of a sudden you'll hit this spot where it's like, wait a minute, we got it, right? We're working together, and it, it's really kind of gratifying. We work with a lot of young men, and we had a couple of young guys just out of college, strapping young men. We were in the woods uh, cutting some big oak, and these two guys, they were, we were both took a cut, and each of us had a saw. Steve and I were just smoking them, right? Right, because so you had... Finally, they said, well, we think your saw is sharper than ours, right? So, ah. so let's have your saw. So we traded them saws and just like kept going, right? And they're like, I can't believe it. But it's just, it's the technique. It's the brotherhood. It's that, it's that getting into that groove with one another the way the Holy Spirit wants us to be with, with each other. Yeah, right? it's, it's the whole, the whole, going back to the whole concept of iron sharpening iron. Men, men get formed by, by, by other men. Uh, you need to be around other strong men. Now, you get formed by other men. You could be formed into something you wouldn't be proud of, or you can be formed into something that, as David said, by the eye can crush a troop, by the eye can leap a, ball, a, a wall, by the eye can bend a bow of bronze. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're going to be right back with Stephen Ford and John Bradford from Wilderness Outreach. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I want to let you remind you guys, you know, a lot of you are fans of our reality TV show, motorcycle-based TV show called Long Ride Home. Uh, with Bear Wozniak, you have to know the With Bear Wozniak. And it's not the Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. It's Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. That is now available on iTunes, Prime Video, and Google Play. Uh, EWTN, I think, played our series about 20 times, all 10 episodes, and Armed For the Armed Forces Network has has been playing it, and uh, it's only the second EWTN show to be up on the Armed Forces Network and the second one to be up on iTunes. And uh, so the idea is a lot of people love our show, but they never saw all 10 episodes in sequence, and it's important that you watch it in sequence. And a lot of, uh, a lot of you would love to share it, you know, sit down with your sons or a family member and just power watch it over a week. So you can go to iTunes and, uh, you, you know, you pay to watch it, but it helps us fund our next our next uh, uh, series. So Long Ride Home Season 2, we're, we're in the final stages now. We're going back through and doing the final massaging and cleanup of the first six episodes. We're going to re release episode Season 2 uh, with six episodes, Part 1, and then Season 2 with six episodes, Part 3. Season 1, we rode from Cocoa Beach, Florida, all the way to San Diego through the... Um, Big Bend country of Texas. And season two, we, we rode from Cocoa Beach down to Key West with Archbishop Wenske, and then we turned around and rolled thunder all the way up to New Jersey for a men's rally, down the Blue Ridge Parkway in the Tail of the Dragon. And season three, we've already filmed in Hawaii, so we're getting excited about uh, sharing this all with you. So uh, you can go to our Bear, Bear Wozniak uh, YouTube channel. We have one of our, the first episode is up there for free, so check it out. Uh, we're with John Bradford and um, Stephen Ford. And we are talking about their outreach, uh, the wilderness outreach uh, program. So, what when you when you're so basically re remind us again? Someone contacts you and says, "Say I want to do do one of these outreaches." What what do they? What's the what what happens? Yeah, well, you know, we we'll, we'll always do an interview because we want to make sure that uh, guys understand what they're getting into and uh, that they really have have in their heart that they want to do this, and and basically. Uh, uh, you know, we 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 have several expeditions. So if you look at our website, you're going to see there's three expeditions this year. There's two in Wyoming, down in the one in the Platte River Wilderness, one in the Absorka Wilderness, and then one out in the state of Washington at the Glacier Peak Wilderness. But anyway, a guy can apply. He 
uh, and, and then pay a, a minimal fee. Use, most of our fees are like $200, right? It's nothing. You got you to gotta pay your way to get there and get the gear you need. But basically, we backpack in uh, typically 5 to 15 miles. Well, so do, does everybody yeah. fly in or drive in, and then where do they uh, rendezvous? And Yeah, it's a little bit of everything because we've had. So in Wyoming, a lot of times, like Steve's been gone to Wyoming for a few years now. He drives from Ohio out there, right? Beautiful you know, drive, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it is. But yeah, so it, but anyway, then the one thing that so it's a it's a it's a it's a boot camp. It's a, it's a physical, spiritual, and intellectual boot camp. It was like 5 a.m. We're getting out of bed. 5:30 We're going into morning prayer. Then we're eating breakfast. Then we're packing back into the woods and start to work. And in the evening, we have an hour of silence and solitude. Uh, celebrate mass, usually by five o'clock. Dinner at six o'clock, and then seven o'clock evening prayer. And then we do two hours of seminar about what it means to be a man really the science and the liturgy of what manhood is okay well give us a give us a a taste of that yeah so so for instance uh you know we will look at all the for instance the physical differences between men and women right i mean it's all you have to do is look at the olympic data that comes in every four years and you can see that for instance especially in, in events like the shot put you realize the woman's shot put weighs almost half as much is the man shot put in the Olympics? And if you if you look at that, the men are throwing out throwing the women by two times the distance once you apply. And if, and if you look at so on a physical level, man's very different. On the genetic level, we're very different, right? There's a two percent difference between the male and the female on the on the on the physical level, which is at the core of who we are, right? Then 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 on the on the on the level of how we were created, which we talked a little bit about earlier. Uh, you know, in Genesis 1, the man's created out of the dirt and the water. And then he's mentored by God the Father in the original workshop, right? So he's imprinted on him this completely different experience where the woman, when she's she's basically built out of the man's rib and, and in a sense, finer stuff, right, human material, the first thing she sees is the universe in relationship. In a sense, man's built in the original solitude, right? Because we as men know we like solitude, right? A woman is actually built in the original relationship, right? So she's she comes onto the scene. It's that the universe is teeming with relationship. And then here's this guy named Adam right in front of her, right? So so it's, it's just kind of like right at the core of who we are. We're both human, but we're very different, right? And we have to honor those differences. And that's one of the problems we have in the culture today, right? It's trying to wipe that out. So, you know, it's just like uh, Sister Lucia said, the final battle is going to be over the family, and the evil one is attacking us on that level of the differentiation between male and female. What do you say, Steve? No, I, I just kind of listen to what John's saying, that, you know, we're, we are totally different. We're, we're uh, I think uh, John quotes this uh, quite often, that there's like 2% difference in our genetic makeup between male and female, which is a greater difference than what is between, uh, you know, man and our next closest species which is the chimpanzee so think about that just think about how much different just on a genetic level from a genetic matter level how much different man and woman truly are but we're different but we're complementary there's things that that i can do that my wife will never ever be able to do but conversely i will never ever be able to bear a child and I, i was not made to do that yeah and then like on the on the brain on the structure of the on the new of the uh uh, on the structure of the brain, and there's some great work being done in the uh, the University of Pennsylvania Medical School by some folks there, and they're doing all these MRI imaging of the male and the female brain, and they're finding these profound differences, and they're speaking in terms of complementarity. It's amazing, right? Here are these scientists that are talking about the male and the females complementary to one another, and they've actually seen how the, the woman is made, her brain is structured to connect the analytical to the intuitive. And the man's brain is made, is structured to connect the perceived to the coordinated action. And I always like to think about that. That's kind of, that's a lot of words right there. But think about Mary at the first miracle of Cana. She says to Christ, there's no wine there, right? It's not my time, woman. If, and he says, it's not my time, but he goes ahead. So she, she's connecting, hey, there's something going on here. 
She's seeing that something could happen, so he takes the coordinated action as the as the the real man, right, the, the son of God, and actually makes then the the wine from the water, right. So there's a, and you can imagine in 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 the uh, the ancient times when a woman might say, "Wow, wouldn't it be nice if that creek was over here where we could water the garden, right, a little bit easier." And you can imagine that men say, "Hey, we can we can build a channel and reroute that water." So there's that complementarity where men use our, you know, our phys- physicality and our ability to do engineering and all that stuff, and women kind of help point the way for us, right? So we work together as a as a successful humanity together in that way. So what what is it that you're, <clears throat> what what do the men take away when they've come come on this wilderness experience with you? What do you want? What practical things do they take home with them to apply to their lives, to their prayer lives or family lives? Yeah, I we think, got about yeah. two minutes. We got to take a break. So I got you. Uh, one of the things, and I, and I, 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 it's easier for me to talk, but I, I know Steve and all the men that have come on Wilderness Outreach pretty much get into the liturgy of the hours. So we're like liturgy of the hours guys, right? Okay, Morning, let's let, let's yeah, yeah, let's take a time out right there because yeah, I right. love the liturgy of the hours. Okay. Uh, in one minute, can you explain how easy that is to do and what it means, Steve? What it means to me? Uh, to I mean, me, what, what, what the Liturgy of the Hours is. Yeah. Oh, what the, it's, it's the uh, collection of prayers of the, of the, of the church. Uh, it's the prayers that you know, each and every uh, you know, priest, deacon uh, you know, says every single day. I mean, it, it's, a re, it's, it's regimented. Um, it, uh, you know, basically, that kind of walking you through it. I mean, you know, the, the first part of it is you know, the uh, this office of readings, and then there's morning prayer. There's you know, daytime. Or there's mid morning prayer, daytime prayer, mid afternoon prayer, evening prayer, night prayer. I mean, it's just it, yeah. it, it regiments my day. When my when I don't do morning prayer, when I don't do evening prayer, my life just seems chaotic, and and I can't figure out why, quite what's wrong until I sit back and look. And it's like, wait a minute, I. I I didn't start my day off right, or I didn't end my day right. And so the Liturgy of the Hours, which means, by the way, the work of the people, um, and men love to work. I don't have time to pray. i got to go to work. Well, this is your most important work. But the Liturgy of the Hours uh, basically takes you through the Bible along with the, um, <coughs> the, the daily reading. Uh, it's a journey uh, of faith, and the Office of Readings is so profound. Uh, but you, it's so it, you can buy a one-volume set or a four-volume set, or you can just go to Laudate or to Universalis and subscribe, and they give you those, the prayers for each day. We're talking with John Bradford and Steve Ford from Wilderness Outreach. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wastic Adventure. My producers remind me that we want to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and subscribe to our newsletter, because if you do, uh, you get our show emailed to you, even the day bef- the, the day that it, it airs, but first thing in the morning, uh, and you get a YouTube version of it, so, uh, so you can share it with your friends, and it kind of updates you on everything. And we have a great store. We have my uh, two, two books, my two books, Deep in the Way of a Surfing Guide to the Soul, and Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and all kinds of other stuff are there. We have the Warrior Rosaries and all of those things there. So we want to remind you to go there and subscribe to our newsletter. Thank you for doing that. Uh, and also I want to invite men to become members of Bears Man Cave. Uh, it's a secret Facebook group. You can only join by going to our website first. But then you're uh, thrown in with a mix of a group of men who will challenge you and equip you and pray with you and um, people you can uh, pray for and share with. And every two or three weeks, we have a Bears Man Cave meetup. We use Zoom video chat technology, and everybody gets to look at everybody and talk. And we go through my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, which is designed for small men's groups. And we just talk story. And we model how uh, people can form their own men's group. A lot of men have the That Matters You program. There's so many great programs out there, but Sometimes some men don't want to go to a church basement and participate in something. So having a group out on the deck of your backyard, having a cigar and a shot of whiskey and, and a, you know, reading through uh, the, the Deep Adventure book or something like that is a great way to, to form. And if you don't have a men's group in your church or you don't have a men's group to participate in, it's probably your fault. So if you're feeling a need for it, you should be the one to start it. 
So we have John Bradford and uh, you know Stephen Ford, who you didn't know just how great this adventure was going to be when you when you began uh, when you started the Wilderness Outreach, John. No, I really didn't. Uh, in fact, it's it's amazing because I you know as a contractor, so I love con- construction and it's a it's kind of a hockey game, right? A hockey it's a it's a hockey game out there where you get a fight for to get the job done right. You got to fight with all these other people and and uh, so when I moved and I love that kind of construction industry thing and it's actually my wife that kind of led the way. You know, she started saying, you know, she was working with me in in, in my business and she started asking me this question you know, how long are you going to do this construction stuff, right? And I was like, well, you know, I, I could do this till I'm 90, you know, until I lay down in the grave. I love construction. I love the men. I love the, the excitement. I love building stuff. And so after she asked me that like every year for about five years, and I finally said, honey, why are you asking me that same question every year? And she said, because I think you need to be doing something else, and I need, think it needs to be God-centered. And I, Wow, and I, what a wife. <laughs> Wow. What was interesting about that, this is interesting how the Holy Spirit works, because I used to do a lot of backpacking right out of college back in the early 70s. I was out west. I was traveling over the place. I was working construction, backpacking into the Sierra, up into the Cascades, really having a good time. However, my life was not very virtuous at that time. And and but so so here I am in my 50s and I'm starting to think, wow, I'd really like to go backpacking again, but I'm suppressing it. Right. I'm suppressing it because I'm thinking it's bad. It's bad mojo, right? I don't want to go back to where I was because I'm, you know, a Catholic man now. But when and I told her, I said, "Well, I'd kind of like to go backpacking again." And she said, "Well, why don't you do that, right?" So I ended up out in Oregon on a trail project back in 2006 with a bunch of young men, and it was great. It's like I went there as this Catholic man, and I got to work with these secular young guys right and i and frankly i whipped them into shape you know i mean i mean that in a brotherly way but we had a lot of fun we worked hard i challenged them they challenged me back there were guys that were cursing all the time i'd take them off to the side and say why do you why are you speaking like that right all you're doing is hurting yourself you, you're better than that brother right so so when i came back out of that, i talked to a priest and he said wow we need that in the church and it was Father Chuck Kelly, and he grabbed me. And he says, "We need that in the church, right?" And I, I felt like this electricity was just shot up through my. And I was like, "Yeah, that's what it is, right? That's what I've been. This is all this this life at the age of 54 years old. All of a sudden, I realized this is what God brought me here for, right?" And so it's like a year later, we're in the Sierra with a bunch of young Catholic men, and then it's just so here we are, 48 expeditions later, right? 47 expeditions later, getting ready to go into the 50th, right? And we're going to, in 2020, we're going to have an expedition. It's going to be called the Rendezvous, and we're probably going to have it in Wyoming. And I'm inviting all the guys from the your your adventure, and you guys can ride in on your Harley. When, when, when are you going to be there? When? Well, I'm not sure. I haven't set the date yet, but it's going to be in 2020. But I'll let you know about that. Then so where is it going to be, sure? Wyoming? Yeah, it'd probably be in Wyoming, because that's where the original rendezvous used to be, where the mountain men went, right? Oh, yeah, I'm a big, I mean, I, I mean I, I've read all my Louis L'Amour books back in the day, oh, and then yeah. I read a lot of mountain men stuff, and I used yeah. to have a cabin in Montana by Glacier Park. Oh, wow. Which I built myself, which is pretty hysterical, because yeah. I, I always thought, I, I'm a CPA, you know. So I thought, well, I'll, after, after tax season, I'll go do something easy. You know, I need to do something physical. I'll go build a cabin. I had no idea how hard it is to build a square level foundation, much <laughs> less, you know. But that goes back to that 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 uh, that brotherhood, you know. And yes. I, we are riding motorcycles out there. We think we're going to be there in 2019, but I'm not okay. sure. I'm not sure yet. But what, something that. You, but but we're going to go out to Glacier Park, so okay. we'd be in your area. But that might be in 2019 instead of 2020. We're not sure well, yet. But well, 2019, we're going to be, you know, once again, we're going to be down in southern Wyoming in the Platte, like July 5th through the the, the 14th, and then we're going to be up in northern Wyoming in the North Absorka Wilderness from July 19th through the 28th. Uh, we're going to be there about two weeks later, a little bit north of there, but we'll okay. find a way. We'll find a way to rendezvous. But that word rendezvous is such a such a mountain man word, isn't it? Isn't it? And, you know, it's interesting. I was telling a, a really good priest. In fact, you may have heard of this book called The Mentor's Handbook. 
that's come out. And I haven't a, yet, no. Yeah, this is a great book by well, a priest to be a vocations director. Con- connect a, us. Connect us. Yeah, I will. I'll send okay. you the information. You've got to okay. read this guy's book on, on masculine mentorship. It's really great stuff, right? So it's Father Peter Henry. Okay. And, uh, but anyway, when I was talking to him about this, this idea, this big get-together from all the guys that's ever been on a wilderness outreach, he says, I know what you need to call it. And I said, what? He said, rendezvous, right? So he, yeah. he was like, Zoned right into that. There right? you go. I mean, you know, being up in the being up in the wilderness like that, like in my cabin up in by Columbia Falls, there's no more phones. The cell phones don't work there. You know, even the, even back in the day, but this is back in the late '90s when I had my cabin there. Some people had radio phones, but those didn't even work that good. But um, so there was this cool thing that would happen where, <clears throat> in this gravel road, there's no electricity for the the last twenty. I'm I'm two miles from Canada, left west side of. Uh, the Flathead River, Glacier Park's right across from me, just a mile away. And um, there's no phones. So people would, all the time you'd see two pickups going opposite directions, pulled over the side of the road, window rolled down, and someone saying, hey, John told me that Mary said if I saw you to contact Bill. You know, that's, and if you went up at someone's house, you'd always say hello to the house. And then if they weren't there, there was always a notepad so you could write a note that you were there and what you needed. So it's it's that when you when you when you strip yourself of all this technology, it gets back down to people, you know, inter interrelating with people. Right. Yeah. Praise be to God. Right. That's what we need more of. And, and the rendezvous for us, the summit of our faith, is of course the Eucharist. Do you celebrate the Eucharist when you're when you're out there? Oh yeah, yeah. We always take a priest with us. We celebrate Mass every day. We even have you know, yeah, yeah. Every day we have a. That's that's a big part of the whole the whole uh, adventure. There is going into the you know into mass and and uh, partaking in the Eucharist, right? The so how? Of, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and you do it on the you had a lot of masses on the summit, I imagine. I think you we did. Have, yeah, we have, we have, and it's in, you you talked about the uh, these the Sangre de Cristo. One of the largest altars we ever built was on a ridge top in northern New Mexico, in the La, in the the uh, Cruces Basin wilderness area, looking due east over the uh, the the uh, Sangre de Cristo at sunrise. Oh, gorgeous! And the elevation of the host, and it's like the sun is just like beaming through it, right? Oh. And it's, I'd have to send you a picture of that. You'd love to see that picture. Two, two great Please do. with us. And it's a, yeah. So no, that's that without that, it's like, it's, it's, we've done a couple wilderness outreaches where for some reason or other, we couldn't have a priest with us and it, it's just not the same thing. But there is so. something about going to a, getting to a summit. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, I would always hike. And I remember when I got my, my first Ninja Black Belt, we, we went, we went rolling through the mountains all night long, fighting as we went here and there, stopping and fighting. Then we rose. We got to the top of the summit, overlooking uh, the the ocean, and uh, in the other direction was the sunrise. And it was just so it was just so beautiful. And for the church to say that the Eucharist is the source and summit of our faith. If you've ever been out to the top of a mountain at a sunrise, maybe after skiing or something like it, that it says it all. So this is we've been talking with Stephen Ford and John Bradford with the Wilderness Outreach. You can find them at wildernessoutreach.net. They uh, take men out on expeditions into the mountains, and you are invited to join them as long as you're a man. How old do you have to be? Well, we have fathers and sons expeditions starting up for young men as 14 and up. So, so kind of confirmation age and above. Yeah. Okay, well, we got we to gotta go, guys. So this has uh, been the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, to find out more, or go to wildernessoutreach.net to find out more about their outreach, and until next week, as we say on Long Ride Home, Viva Cristo Rey, and aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group. All at bearwasnick.com.